Welcome everyone. In this lecture of particle physics, we will learn about fundamental forces. For this lecture, besides Griffith's introduction to particle physics and Y.K. Lim's problem and solution of atomic nuclear and particle physics, we have considered introduction to nuclear and particle physics by A. Das and T. Forbell and nuclear and particle physics and introduction by Brian R. Martin as the reference book. This and the upcoming lectures are going to be different from the recent lectures in particle physics. Maybe the information described in this lecture is different from your knowledge about particle physics so far. My suggestion for this lecture is to watch the complete lecture carefully so that there is no confusion remain. This universe exists due to the precise balance of the four fundamental forces. These four fundamental forces are gravitational force, electromagnetic force, weak force, and strong nuclear force. All the events in universe are due to these four forces. Let's first talk about gravitational force. Gravitational force is our oldest known force. According to Newton's classical gravitational force, this force applies between two mass particles. The magnitude of this is proportional to the mass of both particles and inversely proportional to the square of their distance. The gravitational force is an inverse square force, which means that its strength decreases as the distance between the particles increases. But according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, for applying gravitational force between any two particles, it is not necessary for the particle to have rest mass. Rather, if the particles have energy and momentum, then the gravitational force on them will be applicable. Because of this, light can also experience gravitational force. Gravitation is a force of attractive nature, which does not depend on medium, orientation and velocity of particles. The most important thing is that the gravitational force is the weakest force among all the four forces. Since the mass of subatomic particles is much lower than the mass of our daily life experience object, it is assumed that gravitational force has no significant effect on the interactions of subatomic particles. Therefore, gravitational force is neglected during the interaction of these particles. But all objects are made of atoms, and the electron in the atom is located around the positively charged nucleus. This force between the electron and proton is electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is the second strongest fundamental force. All chemical, biological, or common physics forces are electromagnetic forces. For example, friction is also an electromagnetic force. The force applied between all charged particles and magnetic particles is electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force is also an inverse square force like gravity. But where gravity is only of attractive nature, the electromagnetic force is found to be both attractive and repulsive in nature. Electromagnetic force depends on medium but not on orientation and velocity of the particles. As we know, the Coulomb force only appears between charged particles. That means all charged particles experience electromagnetic force. But do neutral particles experience electromagnetic force, such as neutron? Well, neutral particles can also experience electromagnetic force. Even though there is no charge on the neutron, if two neutrons are brought closer to each other, then there will be no Columbian force between them. But neutron has spin angular momentum of half h bar. This spin angular momentum provides the neutron a magnetic moment. Whenever two neutrons come in contact, their magnetic moment interact with each other like a magnet and magnetic interaction is also a part of electromagnetic interaction. There are four possible situations for the interaction with electromagnetic force. First, particle have a charge as well as a magnetic moment, like electron. Second, particle is neutral but have a magnetic moment, such as neutron. Third, the particle is charged but does not have a magnetic moment, such as charged pion. Pion spin is zero. Fourth, 
The particle has neither a charge nor a magnetic moment, such as neutral pion. Neutral pion does not interact with electromagnetic force. Okay, because of the opposite charge of electron and proton, attractive electromagnetic force applied between them. But inside the nucleus, many positively charged protons are located together in a very small range instead of a repulsive electromagnetic force. Then how is nucleus stable? This can only happen when a stronger force than the electromagnetic force is present inside the nucleus. This force is called strong nuclear force. Like its name, strong nuclear force is the strongest fundamental force. It is not a central force like gravity and electromagnetic, nor it follow inverse square law. Nuclear force is charge independent but spin, velocity and orientation dependent. Normally the nature of this force is attractive but its nature becomes repulsive when the separation between particles is very less. Since a strong force is charge independent, the force applied between proton-proton, proton-neutron and neutron-neutron are the same. Due to this, Protons can stay together even in such a short range inside the nucleus. With the discovery of radioactivity, a strange thing was observed that in beta minus decay, electrons are coming out from inside the nucleus, while there is no electron inside the nucleus. To explain this, a new force was introduced, which is called weak force. This force is responsible for decay process. Weak force is just weak force of name. In fact, it is 10 to the power 25 times stronger than the gravitational force. Now let's compare all four forces. Between any two particles, the fundamental forces apply not only because of a field, but because of the exchange of particles. These particles are called exchange particles or mediator particles or quanta of force. First let's talk about gravitational force. The exchange particle of gravitational force is graviton. Although this particle has not yet been discovered, this particle has only prediction. According to this, it is a hypothetical particle of massless neutral spin 2. Next force is weak force. Two exchange particles are defined for weak force, W and G boson. W boson has mass around 80 giga electron volt while G boson has mass around 90 giga electron volt. Both particles are of spin 1 particles. W plus and W minus are charged particles as well as these two are antiparticles of each other. Whereas G boson is a neutral particle. It is own antiparticle. W plus minus boson has magnetic moment but G boson has no magnetic moment. The W plus minus particle is responsible for absorption and emission of neutrino in a reaction, while G boson is responsible for transferring energy, momentum, and spin in a weak interaction. The quanta of electromagnetic force is photon. Photon is a neutral massless boson particle of spin 1. Now let's talk about strong force. In the case of strong force, there is often a confusion that the quanta of strong force is gluon or pion. Well, to understand this, we need to understand strong force. A nucleus consists of proton and neutron, while proton and neutrons are made of quarks. Between two nucleons, the pion act like an exchange particle. Due to the exchange of this pion, proton and neutron experience strong force. But proton, neutron and pion are made of quarks. The gluon act like an exchange particle between two quarks. Due to the exchange of gluon, two quarks experience strong force. That means strong force works in two different ways. One between nucleons with the exchange of pion and another between quarks with the exchange of gluons. Another thing to be understood here is that in both cases, the mechanism of strong force is completely different. But if called strictly, the quanta of strong force will be called gluon, because pion itself is made of quarks, and the strong force between the quarks is due to the gluon itself. 
The mass of the pion is around 140 mega electron volt while the gluon is massless. There are three types of pion while so far a total of eight types of gluon have been discovered. The pion is both charged and neutral while all gluons are neutral particles. The spin of pion is zero while the spin of the gluon is one. Now let's talk about the range of these forces. To calculate the range of a force, we need the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. According to this, the uncertainty in energy and time of a particle is approximately equal to h bar. Writing energy in form of rest mass energy and time in the form of range, we get a relation between the range and the mass of the particle. According to this, the heavier the particle, the shorter its range. Here, the range means the distance traveled by the particle before decay. For example, if the particle is massless, its range will be infinite. After being released from a particle, it can travel to infinite distance without being decayed. The exchange particles of gravitational and electromagnetic force are massless, so the range of these forces are infinite, while the mass of exchange particle of weak force is the highest among all, around 90 giga electron volt. Therefore, the range of this force is the shortest, 0.002 Fermi. Now let's talk about the range of strong force. This is a bit interesting. Since the mass of pion is approximately 140 mega electron volt, so the range of strong force between nucleons is of Fermi order. But the gluons are massless. Then the range of strong force between the two quarks should be infinite, but it is not so. The range of strong force between the quarks is less than the strong force between the nucleons. The reason for this is the different mechanism for strong force in both the cases. If we pay attention to gravity, electromagnetic and weak force, the forces apply between such particles which are free from each other, means they can also exist individually. These particles can be separated from each other. The same thing is with nucleons. The nucleons can also be separated from each other. A single proton can also exist. Hence, the range of all these can be calculated from this formula. But this is not the case with quarks. The quarks cannot be separated from each other. All three quarks present in a proton are always bound to each other. Apart from this, quarks have no individual existence. They are always in a bound state with the other quarks. Because of this, their mechanism is different and this formula is not applicable for them. By calculating their range from this different mechanism, the strong force between the quarks also comes to short range. Now let's talk about their strength. The strength of this strong force is the highest among the all fundamental forces. The electromagnetic force has less strength than this strong force. Weak force has less strength than EM force and the gravitational force has least strength. Comparing their strength, if the strength of strong force is 1, then the strength of EM force will be 10 to the power minus 2, while the strength of weak force will be 10 to the power minus 13, and the strength of gravitational force will be 10 to the power minus 42. But what does strength mean? The greater the strength of the force, the faster the particle will decay due to that force. Like this is a nuclear reaction. If its decay was due to strong force, then its decay would be quicker. Because the strength of strong force is the highest, means the mean lifetime of this decay reaction will be the shortest. But if the decay is due to electromagnetic interaction, then its mean lifetime will increase, while the mean lifetime of decay particles result from weak interaction is the longest. The mean lifetime of strong force is around 10 to the power minus 24 second. The lifetime of the electromagnetic interaction are between 10 to the power minus 20 to 10 to the power minus 16 second, while the lifetime of the weak decays are around 10 to the power minus 13 to 10 to the power minus 6 second. Due to the least strength of gravitational force, particle decay takes years. In June 2019 CSI net exam, a question was asked, the mean lifetime of the following decays are 
In this question, we want to know the correct order of the mean lifetime of the three decay particles. For this, first we need to identify that in which forces these particles are decaying. We will discuss this in next lecture. For the time being, let you know that the first reaction is due to strong force. The second is due to EM force and the third reaction is due to weak force. So in the first reaction, the particle will decay fastest means its mean lifetime will be the shortest whereas in the third reaction due to weak force the particle will decay quite slow means its lifetime will be longest so option 3 is the correct order of their lifetime apart from this the massive the particle the greater the probability of decay in its light mass particles means massive particles have shortest lifetime now it's time for short notes. Gravitational force is the weakest fundamental force of attractive nature. This force is applicable to both mass and massless particles. It is a center force which follows inverse square law. The quanta of gravitational force is graviton. Graviton is the hypothetical particle of massless, neutral and spin 2. The range of gravitational force is infinite strength is the lowest and the lifetime is the longest. Electromagnetic force is the second strongest fundamental force. This force is applicable to all charged and magnetic particles. If a particle has a magnetic moment, they can experience this force. The electromagnetic force is also the central force, which follows the inverse square law. Its nature is both attractive and repulsive. The quanta of electromagnetic force is photon. The photon is a particle of massless, neutral on spin 1. The range of this force is infinite. Strength is less than the strong force but more than the weak force. Weak force is responsible for nuclear decay. The quanta of this force are W and G boson. Both these particles are massive particles of spin 1. The W boson is charged while the G boson is neutral. The W boson is responsible for the emission and absorption of neutrino in weak interactions while the G boson is responsible for the transfer of energy, momentum and spin. The strength of this force is greater than the gravitational force but due to the heavy mass of the exchange particle, its range is only 0.002 Fermi. Strong force is the strongest fundamental force. It is non-central force. By the nature, this is attractive at the large distance, but repulsive at very short distance. This force has quanta pi on and gluon. If the strong force is in between two nucleons, then the pi on behaves like an exchange particle. But if strong force is in between two quarks, then gluon behave like an exchange particle. Gluons are massless, neutral, spin-1 particles. The strength of this force is the highest and the range is of Fermi order. If you wish, you can download detailed PDF notes of this lecture. To download notes, you can either get the membership for our Patreon page or via link given in the description below.